so we are here at the GPU audio uh, booth to talk about uh, audio processing on GPUs, which as I walked up, I, you know, running a podcast, I had said, like, I, it didn't occur to me that you weren't using the entire system to do most audio processing. When we think this of, is the case. Yeah. yeah when we yeah. think of like, as, as filmmakers, we think like, oh, obviously the most taxing thing is going to be 8K red footage or whatever, and not the audio. Oh, audio is just, you know, the files are small and whatever, but yeah. uh, effects can, uh, I've just learned today, be incredibly taxing on a system. <laughs> definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so yeah, again, we're, we're GPU Audio. You know, thanks for stopping by. It sounds like you guys are having a good conference so far. Um, yeah. So we're, we're kind of the outlier here. I mean, we're like, you know, specifically an audio technology company. And our mission is basically to unlock power for GPUs to be used as uh, creative vessels, you know, for processing power for audio plugins and audio effects, audio programs, any, anywhere that you're using what you call DSP. And uh, in this context, it's digital signal processing. Any context in which that's being used, uh, it can now be powered by your GPU for the first time in history. And it's which is wild. <laughs> that, like, <laughs> I guess graphics process, you wouldn't think audio, but yeah, still. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you say that like you didn't know that it was already being used, you know, and I think that's the case for a lot of people um, is that, you know, your CPU is, is running all of the audio. So audio is inherently a sequential process, right? You know, the, the way I could kind of compare it is like, you know, traffic bottlenecking, right? It's like right. you're trying to run hundreds of plugins, you know, tons of effects, you know, lots and lots of stuff. You're trying to run it through like single threaded operation, right? In most of the digital audio workstations. Right. And when you're doing that, um, it's bottlenecking, right? So like the more effects you add, the more intense the effects, especially if you're running like machine learning plugins or if you're running spatial audio plugins and stuff like that, Dolby Isotope Atmos or, or Isotope is like a really classic example of this. You know, you start to bottleneck very, very quickly and you run out of CPU. So what we've done is we've unlocked the GPU through a core technology that we call the scheduler. And this is like a proprietary IP thing. Um, and we've embedded it on AMD GPUs. We've enabled it for other platforms. And essentially, you know, now you can use the GPU to offload all of that rendering of audio so that your CPU can be saved for other important tasks. Like running the program so, itself. Yeah, like running the program <laughs> itself. I mean, like, like so for instance, you know, on this little tech, it's just a tech demo, but basically, sure. you know, we're running a, a very long, like it's almost like a 30 or 45 second convolution reverb tail on um, a total of about 45 tracks in total, um, if you count them as mono. And uh, all of that stuff would normally tax your CPU like almost 90%, you know, right. just based on the algorithm that we're using. And, and But we've designed it to be used on the GPU. And because of that, when I run it, um, like if I press play over here, when I'm running it, you can guys see up here that our CPU is only, you know, taxing about four and a half percent. Yeah. Right. And, and that's because that's it's being offloaded. Yeah. So it's running on on the GPU. So sorry, I, I, the, I asked that question wrong. Oh, you're cool. Normally, yeah. uh, what could you use like all the threads of a CPU or is, or is audio inherently a single threaded? Process? Almost all audio programs are all single threaded. Okay. Yeah. So they just they just don't take advantage of it. Um, it's really hard to standardize that kind of practice across the industry. But with the GPU, you know, if you parallelize the algorithm and then execute it on GPU, in the past, for like the last 10, 15 years, people have had issues. They, they weren't able to do this because of massive amounts of latency between data transfer, mm -hmm. um, between CPU and GPU. But we solved that problem. So now we can run it uh, as low as 150 microseconds of latency. And that's round trip, that's hundreds or even thousands of channels takes advantage of the scaling nature of GPU architecture. So one day we'll see audio programs running in the cloud on GPU servers. Wow. That's essentially where we're going with this. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. And so you were saying that you yeah. were able to, uh, as you said, ping pong between these. So we got Premiere over here. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what's this? Oh, this is Reaper. Reaper. So this is an audio. I, I always said Reaper. It's like, I know yeah, something. Re Reaper's the best, yeah. Yeah, we love Reaper. It's, uh, you know, it's there's more management that you can do like on various sides of things, you know, for development. But yeah, so so essentially what you can do is you could be exporting a project over here in 4K, you know, um, and while you're exporting that project, so let's just, you know, click export here. And that's a 264 export, which is, you know, standard. Yeah, yeah, just a, just a standard program, right? But normally, you know, your computer's occupied. It's going to not really going to be ideal to be hopping in between, you know, going back to your uh, audio program. Right. So kind of what we're demonstrating today is just this very simple idea of you know being able to have multiple concurrent workflows happening at the same time on GPUs without your CPU basically getting uh, bottlenecked and you know, right. taxed, taxed and so to death. The system you're running yeah. this tech demo on is is two uh, W6600 That's right. Radeons. Yeah. And uh, what's the CPU on it? Uh, this is a Threadripper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, casual. I mean, we're <laughs> yeah, casual oh, Threadripper only 4%, gang. Oh, percent huh? <laughs> yeah, Threadripper gang. Yeah, but I mean, really, like, even if this was on like a 
like a laptop, like an RTX laptop or something sure. like that. It's basically the same. Reaper runs about anywhere from 2 to 4% just being open. You know what I mean? Right. So really, all of the DSP is being offloaded onto the GPU. And yeah, uh, yeah so I, I would say, like, you know, probably the most exciting stuff with that is, you know, the companies that we're talking about licensing this with. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we obviously have, like, a beta suite of plugins coming out. People can try it out now at gpu.audio is the website. Um, you know, and these beta plugins are going to be there for testing. We have about 20,000 users signed up since June uh, to test this out, and they're helping us. Um, we're signing on third parties to develop new software that, with that. So, um, you know, all of these other plugin suites from other brands and stuff are going to be powered by GPUs, you know, in 2023. That's right. And, and with AMD, you know, hopefully what we'll end up doing is, you know, finding a way to co-distribute some of this stuff too so that AMD users can automatically have extremely powerful audio tools, you know, just by nature of having a GPU. Right. Yeah. Well, and I, it's been a while since I've seen, what's the AMD version of uh, SLI? Is it still just called what, SLI? What is the AMD version of SLI again, Antoine? SLI? Like using the two uh, Like linking them together, like NVLink and stuff, but on the AMD version? <laughs> no one knows. Whatever, you've got two uh, two graphics cards running at the same time. Yeah, they're running yeah. at the same time. I and mean, I've, yeah. uh, it's yeah. weird because in the video editing world, that's becoming less and less common. Interesting. I, I think um, I, I am completely... It's a what? Oh, a, oh it's a power issue. Oh, uh, I, see. I was going to okay, say, I, I thought that um, it was just a processing issue. Like uh, Premiere, for instance, doesn't tend to use a ton of GPU. Oh, I see. So, uh, except yeah. for accelerated effects and sometimes rendering it, uh, obviously. Exactly. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So people are just doing less and less of this. So it's it's nice to see uh, more workflows for dual um, GPU for no other reason than I'm a tech nerd. So now we've got the this encode is done and this is still playing its reverby thing and you're at 6.5% CPU. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, if you're doing live tracking, you know, it's going to jump up a little bit, you know, when you're running low latency live tracking and stuff like that. Sure. But basically, so, low latency, I mean, latency really is the killer of audio workflows. You know right. what I mean? Because, you know, it's not just, it's, you know, sometimes it's a matter of just adding one or two more instances of a plugin. Or, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about spatial audio workflows, you know, for film and TV and VR. Like, I just finished a VR film for uh, Prosper XR, which is a really cool VR company people sure. should know about. Um, and, you know, in those in those kind of workflows, I mean, you can load 15 instances of a plugin. And because you're taking stereo and you're translating that to like 32 channels of audio in Ambisonics, right. I mean, your, your CPU is just gone like that. Yeah. So, I mean, being able to like really scale this across for the future of audio plugins and audio uh, workflows is really important. And, and, and frankly, CPU is not really prepared for that, yeah. you know, in a, in a lot of ways. So, you know, there's not much conversation happening industry-wide about, you know, how to improve the amount of power other than you know, just investing another like five, six thousand dollars in the latest, you know, Mac hardware right. and stuff like that. You know, well, it's, and it's the, unreasonable for some people. Unfortunately. Totally. And and yeah. the cool thing that I'm just thinking about right now is like, I was just at a concert last night. Like, you know, back a house could obviously, you know, if you, if you've got, I guess, who does back? I guess the front, I guess front tours, of, front of front house. house yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, like you know, uh, people who are touring and stuff, you know, who are if you're whatever Muse, you know, they have a lot of stuff going on there. Absolutely. I'm sure that um, something like that would be handy for those types. Yeah, so we've had, uh, it's, it's interesting, it's not just audio plugins that we're talking to, we're talking to synthesizer companies, we're talking right. to speaker monitor companies, anybody that's, you know, you'd be surprised how much digital signal processing is used in hardware units, it's used in microphone set setups, it's used in interfaces like this one. Right. Um, there's a lot of instances in which this is used. AMD in particular has like really interesting embedded solutions, right, for their, for their GPUs. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that like a lot of synthesizers and a lot of other audio hardware, even guitar pedals that have shark chips in them, you know, that stuff is getting deprecated really fast, right? right. They need more, uh, people need a new platform to build on and that's what GPU audio really is. So yeah, yeah we're, we're talking to all these, you know, many different companies spanning the gamut. So front of house is a big one. Yeah. Uh, we talked to companies that are making consoles, you know, mixing consoles for major recording studios and uh, live venues, and they want to use, you know, GPU audio powered, you know, DSP for all of that stuff. Totally. Uh, mostly because of the latency and the idea of, you know, scaling the amount of instances they can use. Awesome. You know, yeah. So, uh, but but for the general user, man, it's just like, you know, you've got a computer on hand, you've got GPUs on it. Why should you have to go out and spend another three thousand dollars on like an, an audio interface to get DSP acceleration when right. you could just click and unlock the GPU? Which well, makes and, a lot of sense. And even you know? for film editors, like more and more people are able to edit uh, their audio at home. Obviously, you know, someone who's um, an audio editor or composer or whatever is going to be better, but 
tons of times you end up having to do your own audio work. And so if, if it's some if it's very involved, if you're doing like a short film, an indie film or something like that, and you're just the editor, you know, it's a lot nicer to be able to uh, unlock more power in your computer to get that job done. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's all about unlocking power. And then when you unlock power, it sounds like a marketing thing, but it's like you can unlock creativity, right? Uh, right. I was at an NVIDIA Omniverse uh, chat recently at GTC. Are you familiar with GTC? I'm not. Yeah, so we're at this GTC talk and um, it was really interesting because one of the guys, I think it was Richard Karras from Omniverse, you know, he was saying, you know, in their experience with visual design people and graphics people and film people, creativity is only limited by processing power. Yeah, 100, I've, I said you know? this in a different video. <laughs> uh, friction is the killer of, I guess, creativity. We're like, that's it. And it, it, it physically or uh, computationally, I don't know. If 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 a tool is too far away from your workbench and you can't quite get to it, you'll never yeah. use it. You know, if it's behind yeah. something, you're never going to use it. You'll spend a thousand dollars on a hammer, and if you just can't grab it immediately, that job is not getting done. Like it's it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for talking to me, man. Yeah. We've uh, we've kind of been ending these interviews uh, with with a more personal question. Okay. Is this your first time at Adobe Max? Yeah, yeah. This is my first time at Max. How, as, as, cool. as a attendee, not as a. I've person. never I've never How even have you been, been to Max, it? man. Yeah, as an attendee, I think it's awesome. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun getting to know. Cool people. I mean, I spent a lot of time in business, you know, meetings like executive chats and stuff like that. And, right. you know, for me personally, that's that's been the really cool part is actually hearing how, you know, I think what I'm really impressed about, especially by companies like Adobe and other people, is that like the DNA of their companies as I talk to these executives, it like really, it really comes out in the products, you know? Yeah. And I feel like every company here paid a shit ton of money to be here right. and actually cares about being here, which is like the total opposite of a convention like NAMM, right, like the music right. conventions, yeah, yeah. where it's like everybody running around trying to get free guitars and <laughs> you know drumsticks and shit. Yeah. But here it's like people really care about it. We got creators coming in all the time. I've met a ton of really interesting people and yeah, yeah I'm, that's, I'm that's, pretty happy. That's yeah. the thing I've been saying is like, it's you're meeting users, not tire kickers. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, there's like people come in here and they're like, oh man, I work for the State Department or I come in and say, right. hey, I work for this media department that's like down the street from your office, like we should talk. Yeah. You know, so I feel like, you know, just getting some collaborations, uh, it's way, way more realistic as an outcome at this conference than other conferences. So, totally. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of Max. Plus, plus a lot of new tech getting premiered. I still got to try the MetaQuest. Pro. Oh yeah, there's always a line. Uh, the line's kind of short right now. But, yeah, uh, I might have to go over there and try that. <laughs> right. Well, I'll let it's you nice get to, meet to you, it. Man. You, nice to meet you too, man. Yeah. Thanks a lot.